Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's Grade 6 Practice Problems Review is on Unit 4, Lesson 6, Using Diagrams to Find the Number of Groups. In Problem 1, we can think of 3 divided by 1 fourth as the answer to the question, how many groups of 1 fourth are in 3? Draw a tape diagram to represent the question and then answer the question. Well, if we just draw a diagram here, and it's going to look very similar to the one in our solution there. If this whole thing represents 3, I can take this entire thing and split it into basically what? 1, 2, and 3. That's our 3. Then, if I break each whole unit into fourths, well, 1, 2, 3, and that's into fourths. 1, 2, 3 is into fourths. 1, 2, 3, that's into fourths. And now, each one of these is one-fourth. And so I'm not going to write one-fourth every single time, but there's a fourth, here's a fourth, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There are twelve one-fourths in three. So how many groups of one-fourth are in three? Same thing as three divided by one-fourth, and that's going to be twelve. Describe how to draw a tape diagram to represent an answer 3 divided by 3 fifths for a friend who is absent. And while we have that tape diagram there, let's try another one, all right? Because if you were absent, you might look at that and go, oh, what is going on? In that deep of a voice, too, I'm sure. If I split and this whole thing represented 3, then in theory, well, here's 1, two, and three. Now I'm breaking these whole units into fifths because I'm dividing the three by three fifths. And so that means I'm going to draw four lines here to break it into fifths. One, two, three, four, because now if I draw those four blue lines, that whole unit becomes one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths, right? And so let's do that now for the two and the three. One, two, three, four, breaks it into fifths. One, two, three, four is breaking this into fifths. And now I want to do three divided by three fifths. So I'm looking for how many groups of three fifths can I get out of three? Well, one, two, three, there's three fifths. One, two, three, there's another three fifths. One, two, three is another three fifths. One, two, three, here's another three fifths. And lastly, one, two, three, here's another three fifths. So, how many groups of three fifths are there? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five. There looks to be five groups of three fifths. So, three divided by three fifths is equal to five. There are five groups of three-fifths out of three. So three divided by three-fifths is equal to five. How many groups in problem three of half days are in a week? Fourteen, right? Boom, done. But <laughs> let's write a multiplication equation or division equation to represent the question and draw a tape diagram to show the relationship between the quantities and answer the question. Use graph paper if needed. Eh. We don't need graph paper. I guess we could, but let's draw our tape diagram here first. We'll start in blue, so we'll just go in blue here. A week. Well, how can I break a week down? It's been one week is equal to seven days. And so if I take this one week and break it down into seven days, I'll draw six lines here. One, two, three, four, Five, six breaks it into the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days that are equalish in size. And now I want to break this down into half days. And so cut the day in half, 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 and cut the day in half here. So how many half days do I appear to have here? Well, one, two, three, four, five, 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It looks like I have 14 groups of half days here. So our solution to how many groups of half days are in a week is 14. Now, let's come up with some equations for that. We can say, well, how many half days times the half day is equal to 7? So what times a half is equal to the 7 full days? Or something equivalent to that, okay? The other way of looking at this is saying, well, I'm taking my 7 days and I'm breaking it into groups of a half. And what's that going to equal? And of course, in each of these cases, what it ended up equaling was 14, right? So, there you go. Problem four. Diego said that the answer to the question, how many groups of five, six are in one, is six-fifths, or one and a fifth. Do you agree or disagree with the statement? Explain or show your reasoning. Spoiler alert, we're going to agree, but let's... Uh, Let's break down this, and I'd like to redraw these diagrams for no other reason than it helps us to maybe visualize it as we go. Let's say this represents one. That's going to represent our one whole unit here. Let's break this down into sixths now, all right? And we're going to do that by drawing five lines. So one, two, three, four, five, because now again, that's one, two, three, four, fifths, sixths. And how many groups now of um, five sixths are there? Well, if each of these are a sixth, here's one, two, three, four, five. This here represents one group of five sixths. Right? One group of five six is right there. But we have this thing hanging out right here. What is that? Well, it takes five to make a whole group, right? And so if you only have one out of five that is necessary to make an entire group, what you have there is one fifth of a group. And so if we bring our colors together here, we have one full group and one fifth of a group. And so what we have is one and one fifth of a group. And so one and one fifth is also equal to six fifths. And so, yeah, we're going to agree um, six fifths is equivalent here. And now we get to a review question, question five from unit four, lesson five, so just the previous lesson. Select all equations that can represent how many groups, so four-fifths are in one. Well, I'm just going to, before I even look at the answer, sometimes looking at all those multiple choices, it can make your head spin. And so how many groups of four-fifths are in one is equivalent to one divided into groups of four-fifths, and I don't know what that is yet. And so, is that answer anywhere here? One divided by four-fifths equals question mark. Sure. It's right there. One divided by four-fifths equals question mark matches what we just read from the question. And now what we need to do is go, okay, are there any other things that are like this? Well, we can eliminate the other division one, right? Because one divided by four-fifths is not the same thing as four-fifths divided by one. You can't just change the order when you divide. And so now we're left with multiplication. You could solve it, or you could just kind of logic your way through this. Now, the other answer it says is D. And here, whoops, that didn't work. Let's try that again. There we go. What times 4 fifths equals 1? Well, that's taking our question mark, right, and multiplying by the 4 fifths, and that's going to equal 1. And so that's where the D comes from. The other way you could look at this is nothing. 
There are no other ways you can look at this. It's not the same thing as 1 times 4 fifths, and it's not the same thing as the question mark times 1 equaling 4 fifths. You can't break it down that way. So it's only going to be D and E. And lastly, last question of the lesson from Unit 3 to Throwback, Lesson 14. Calculate each percentage mentally. Well, as a refresher, when you're calculating 10% of a number, such as 70, what you're going to do is you're going to move those numbers visually here. And so this is going to 10% of 70 is 7. 10% 10 of 110 is 11. It's just sliding those numbers there. Um, heard some people describe it uh, instead of moving the decimal point as, well, you're moving your numbers to the other side of the decimal point, and, and I guess that kind of works too. Now, 25%, you have a couple options. When you're dealing with 25%, you could uh, just look at 1 fourth by multiplying, or you could divide by 4. And so when you have the number 160, I think the simplest thing here mentally to do is divide by 4, and you would get 40. What about 48? Same type of thing. You could divide by 4 or multiply by 1 fourth, and you're going to end up with 12. Now, 50%. Oh, our 50%. Same thing as uh, multiplying by 1 half. And so if you're looking at 90, of course, it's the same thing as dividing by 2 as well. If you're looking at 90, 90 times a half, half of 90 is 45. What about 350? Well, 350, either you divide by 2 or you multiply by 1 half. Either way, you'll get that 175. And now last, let's combine what we know. It's kind of scary, I know. How we're rhyming all the timing. 375% of that. Well, 75%, you have two options. You could multiply by 3 fourths and the whole dividing by um, 4 thirds and all that stuff. Or mentally, if you break 75% down, you could find 25% of a number and 50% of a number and add them together, right? Because 25 plus 50 is 75. And so when we look at the number 300, what's half of 300? 150. Now, half of that is the same thing as 25%, which is 75. And so if I take 75 and add it to my 150, I can get 225. What is 75% of 48? Well, let's use that same logic again. Let's break it into 25 and 50 percents here. And we're looking at the number 48. Well, half of 48 is 24. Half of that is 12. Add those two numbers together and you get 36. Because again, 25 or 50% is 24. 25% is 12. Add those together and you get the 75%, which is 36. Some fun ways to do mental math here. And that is it for this Unit 4, Lesson 6, Grade 6, Practice Problems Review on using diagrams to find the number of groups.